Yo, what's up everybody? Welcome back to the YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you guys a uh, programming language that I made. Entirely in C-sharp. I don't want to go through too much of the code because, well, first of all, it's like really, it's very, very, very messy and everything. But, you know, uh, as you can see, I've kind of made it bite by bite and it's, it's ground up. Um, so if I look through like a... Uh, one of the the exes it makes all of this every single byte in here is written is written from the from the uh you know byte by byte by my by c sharp and um all these exes are standalone so you know i'm on windows 7 it'll probably work on windows 10 you don't need anything you don't need dot net or anything you don't need you don't need the arrow e dot exe for it to run you only need the arrow.exe to compile it. And I'm planning to do a tutorial on one of these. Because I was just trying to figure it out. I put two months of work into this. Of a lot of hours. And now I have hindsight. I can make this a lot more organized. A lot better. A, a lot better structure. But <clears throat> and I'm going to make a tutorial on it. But anyway just to show you guys what I've, what I've done. In my own programming language. I'll just show a few basic features. Define a variable. So um, I'm not going to explain what to do. I'm just going to explain what I am doing. Because I don't expect you guys to just learn my programming language in a few minutes. But it is pretty straightforward. So you can define your variable and then decide it. To some, I'll just set it to something like 7. And I could set it to that. Or I could just make it smaller like that. And then I could define a second variable here. For example. Or set it to something under 10. Just because of uh, hexadecimal. And what I'm going to do after compiling it, and as you can see, the compile.bat, all it is is error.exe, script the error. Um, but anyway, after compiling, I can put in all dbg, and if you don't know what all dbg is, is it, it goes through a any application in, in by instruction by instruction. And if you don't know what an instruction is, it's basically like... Whenever you compile one of your applications on, say, C Sharp, Java, C, anything, it all compiles down to assembly instructions. So this is what's actually running. This is what your computer is is reading in the end, in the grand scheme of things per se. And um, as you see, you know, and this might look kind of overwhelming if you've never used all DVG, but if you look at my code, as you can see, I created a variable and set it to seven. I've created another variable to set the four, so you might be able to put the two and two together. See, there's two lines, so you know you can maybe see this first line sets the variable to seven, the second line sets it to four, and then it returns which exits out the application. So if you pay attention here and here, these are where the variables are stored. So as you can see, it gets set to seven, and the other one will get set to four, and then it exits out the application just as it's supposed to but to do some more important things you know I could add in a while loop and put any boolean operator inside these um, inside these round parentheses which works for if statements as well but I'm not going to show everything because I don't want to make this video too long while say my var is not equal to one just something that will show that the while statement works I'm not, I'm not going to actually do any code here apart from Decrease my var by one. And as you can see, like there's a lot of arrows. That's just because I wanted to uh, keep up with the theme of arrow. That's the name of my programming language. But anyway, you'll now notice that there are probably there are going to be a lot more assembly instructions. And you know you don't really gotta uh, pay attention to much, but apart from down here, which uh, as you can see, that's seven. That's what my var is. It's set to seven. So if you look down there, it should decrease until it's at 1. And I'll do this a little bit slower so you can see how it's looping. And now it's at 1. And now you'll notice that now it exits out the application instead of looping again. So pretty straightforward. And I could show you guys a lot of other things. There's so many other things. This application, there's arrays, there's functions, there's classes. There's, you know, there's uh, four each loops. There's uh, different loops. There's a bunch of other things. There's go-to systems. There's so many things. But... I might as well show you guys something that actually has results that aren't in all the DVG. So um, I can maybe show you guys uh, strings. So I, I made a string class. The way you include include a class is you just do 
include and then you put the class you know I could do string arrow or whatever I want but I'll just string because it's the smallest and as you can see if I just open the class I made it's just uh, the only class I made so far that I actually plan to put to use but it's the string class and it has a few useful functions but I won't be showing too many because I don't want to spend too much time as I said but to, to create a class as you can see all you want to do put the class what type of class it is the name and then whatever you want to initialize it with so say hello and then uh, in, in my string class there's a function called display compile this and you know if compile times aren't actually that long it's just because of the debug things but um if I put this in here as you can see there's now so many assembly instructions so there's no point even going through it in all the dbg because no one you probably really even if you knew all the all you have experience with all dbg you won't really be able to understand immediately what's going on so we should just open this and as you can see it print it displays the string in the form of a message box because that's what the display function does and if i just show a few more functions really quick um i could set the string to upper that's a function i need As you see, it's not too upper, and uh, I can also do multiple spaces. All I have to do is this. I don't really want to explain why because we're running out of time, but I can do like this, and then I can set to lower, and in that case, I'll just set the W right there. Compile, and as you can see, it's not too lower. Hello world, and yeah, that's going to wrap up my video, guys. Uh, I hope I see you guys uh, in the tutorial if you're interested in this, but. I just thought I'd show a demonstration of kind of a programming language that could be made in C-sharp. So, uh, see y'all.